Receiving incoming transmission. This is Idaho calling. Receiving incoming transmission. This is Idaho calling. But, um, to come after not only the most prominent activist, but the most prominent patient advocate activist, um, I really don't think that that was a very wise move on their part. Um, mm -hmm. Because basically, for, for a PR perspective specifically, to make your department go after not only an activist, so that would be a civil liberties problem, but also to go after a patient, which would be another civil liberties problem, um, it doesn't seem like that was the best decision that they could have made. You know, we had, uh, we had our press conference uh, just a couple of hours ago out there on the Capitol steps, and I was really, uh, really warmed my heart to see a lot of the people coming out there. Uh, I spoke to a couple, uh, older couple, that their child, one of their children, is dealing with Crohn's disease mm -hmm. and gets some relief from cannabis, but he said, yeah, she had to move to Washington. Mm -hmm. And so what makes you want to stay here and fight in Idaho, given that they're, you know, trying to kick your ass? Well, people ask me that all the time. Um, I moved to Idaho when I was three. I'm 30. I've only left the state to live in a different state a couple of times for very short amounts of time. Our state is beautiful. I mean, I love the beauty of it. And the people, regardless of what people think of our legislators and our, and, you know, Congress and senators and all the people that are supposed to represent us, Idaho is actually a really compassionate place. I mean, Idaho is one of the places left in the country where if you break down on the side of the road, somebody will pull over and help you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you can't get, you know, food or Christmas or whatever, there are people here that care, genuinely care. Yep. And it's a good place to raise kids when they're not being stolen from you. <laughs> so um, it's, it's been hard for me to want to leave here. I grew up here. I, I don't have very many family connections here anymore, but um, I've made a lot of friends that I've adopted as family. And um, I just, I, I grew up here. I don't want to leave here. I don't think that I should be asked to leave here. This is my home. Why the hell should I have to freaking leave it? Amen. That is ridiculous. Yeah. And people tell me all the time, and then like in Oregon and Washington, the people that leave here are called Idaho refugees, <laughs> and you know to get medical marijuana. And why, why should we have to leave to get medical marijuana? That's ludicrous. So yes. it was just time to change the law. Now, uh, I was looking at your Kickstarter, uh, not Kickstarter, but your WePay campaign, and like you said, you know, the first hour of the show that we did, that we covered this, we raised about $1,000. Uh, the most recent look that I took, uh, we're over $6,000 now. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Yeah. The generosity and support of people through this, it is so humbling and so appreciated. I don't know how we would fight back against this without people that care. I mean, they have my babies. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, retainers for lawyers, and we're going to need a lot of them. Um, the ongoing legal fees. Um, I think there will be probably another fund set up for those. Um, but it's, it's going to be a fight. Um, thankfully, I mean, normally it's, I don't know, I, the CPS worker that I'm dealing with is actually a really nice lady. I, I don't want to paint her to somebody that's not because she's not mean. And the, the foster family that has my children, they don't seem like they're the type that's in for the check, which is really comforting when you don't have your kids. Yeah. <laughs> but the point remains is that's a foster family, and that's CPS, and those are my kids, and they had no right to take them over medicine. I mean, yeah, Idaho law might state that cannabis is illegal in our state. It does state cannabis is illegal in our state, and it shouldn't be a crime to treat an illness, and it definitely shouldn't be a crime to be targeted to use your freedom of speech, and I just, they took my kids. There was no better way to to mess with me than to mess with my kids. And I think that's exactly why they do this kind of thing, is that they know they don't have much of a case when it comes to trying to get people to fear you or to think you that you're a, a, a bad human being uh, and trying to make the, oh, they're just faking it case, in your case isn't going to work. No, it's going to go backwards. Right. So, because I decided um, when this happens that we are cooperating fully with CPS because we want our children back now. Right. Um, Mother's Day is May 12th and I'm not going to have my baby. 
That's not right. Yep. So, you know, we're left with fighting back and being as vocal about it as we can be. And um, it's just a really hard situation. I'm sorry, I lose track of my thoughts sometimes because it's, right. it's just it's just so overwhelming that somebody would come in and take your kids over being a patient. I mean, I had a sign for a long time that said compassion isn't political, and then I had a sign for a long time that said the war on drugs is the war on me. I know my sign is going to be the war on drugs is the war on families. Because this is just too much. I mean, they could have done so many different things to me, but they went after my kids, and that was a mistake. Yeah. Yeah, they, they messed up. We are speaking with Lindsay Reinhardt. She is the chief petitioner for Idaho's Compassionate Choice Act, the medical marijuana act they've been working on for, what, two and a half years now? Right, we had um, the Idaho Medical Choice Act. It was um, 2011 through 2012, April 2012. And now we have an aptly named petition. We weren't allowed to name it this time. We were allowed to name the chapter, so the chapter will be called the Idaho Medical Marijuana Act. Okay. But the Secretary of State decided to name the petition for us, and so it is deemed an initiative relating to medical marijuana. So every time I'm asked what the name of my petition is, I have to respond with an initiative relating to medical marijuana, <laughs> which people then think I am being a smartass when I'm not. It's just called an initiative relating to medical marijuana. And what we've done is we've set up um, a caregiver system, a state dispensary system with production facilities and safety um, center, safety check centers and um, and made it for seriously ill and terminally ill patients. Had this law been in effect, or the last petition that we circulated, um, I would not be in this predicament. Exactly. But because we live in Idaho, I am. Now, um, has there been any response from the Boise Police Department uh, in the media? Is it, are they trying to defend themselves in any way, or are they just trying to hope this slides? I have not heard a peep. Yeah. I have not been charged. I'm, I'm hesitant to say the word yet, because I'm really hoping that they'll just leave me alone by some miracle. Mm -hmm. But, um, not, I mean, I did hear um, the school told me to call one officer um, about what started this. I can't get really too much into sure, that. Sure, sure. I called the officer and he said he wanted to come over to my house and talk to me. And I got a, a feeling in the pit of my stomach that he wasn't just coming over to talk. No. So, um, I um, called my lawyer and he said, no, he's not coming over to talk to you. What's the officer's name? And I gave him the name and the officer never came. And um, I warned that officer when I spoke to him that if he does choose to arrest me, that I have a mess, that it will hurt me to put cuffs on me. I do bruise easily. They are going to have to be very careful with um, if they decided to do that. And I let the lawyer know as well. And because of those things, the lawyer is trying, if they if they do decide to charge me, then he's trying to get them to just cite me mm -hmm. um, instead of um, putting me in jail where I don't belong. Right. Right. All right. So uh, we are going to take a little bit of a break here, uh, give everybody a chance to breathe. And when we come back, we'll continue our interview. We're also going to speak with Mark Reinhardt, no relation, who's done a lot of research on this child protective services issue and how it's being abused. So stick around. We'll be right back. Good work. You guys are all 43 after the hour, and I'm having all sorts of difficulties with connectivity. So please uh, forgive me for just a moment. I'm going to uh, start up another tune here so I can get a chance to fix it, and hopefully we can get you some more good coverage here from, uh, from Boise. So stick around. We'll be right back as soon as I can. Uh, in our little group discussion, we have Mark Reinhardt, and we'll have to grab you a mic here. Okay. There we go. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Russ, for having me on. Uh, tell us about your YouTube channel before we get started. Um, I operate the Idaho Calling YouTube channel. My uh, purpose is unfiltered and uncensored news within the Treasure Valley, Idaho area. I named the channel Idaho Calling after a old BBC call sign from 1933 to 1975. Right on. <laughs> Big shout out to the BBC. Um, so this particular case we're dealing with here with Lindsay Reinhardt involved... Uh, child Protective Services coming in and removing the children from the home because of an imminent danger of there being, you know, non-toxic vegetable matter in the home. 
So uh, you've been doing research on this child protective services, particularly in the state of Idaho now, and you were telling me some pretty shocking things about this being kind of a for-profit, you know, they make a lot of money when they remove the kids. Give people a kind of a snapshot of what's going on with okay. CPS. Okay, there are two pieces of federal legislation, just so your audience understands uh, the background. There's the Fostering Connections Act of 2008 and the Child Abuse Prevention Treatment Act of 1974, reauthorized in 2010. Essentially, the, the one that's been creating the monetary profit issue is the Fostering Connections Act. Uh, the American Bar Association defines the overview in this sense. Fostering connections require states to inform all prospective and adopting parents that they are potentially eligible for the adoption tax credit. In March 2010, the uh, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act extended the adoption tax credit to December 31st, 2011. Essentially, the, the, the amount of money per child for this credit is uh, $12,170 and $13,170 for a tax credit uh, for adoption. And in the, the Bar Association describes the judicial considerations, the questions being, what is the process of notifying the adoptive or prospective adoptive parents of the federal adoption tax credit, which is an IRS form? Mm -hmm. What efforts are there to ensure they understand the eligibility requirements? There is a big problem with how this financing is working because there is a tendency among individual states to place kids under the Title IV-E foster care funding system okay. when it's not really mandated required. For example, if you look at Idaho, and I'm pulling this up right now, the IG's report for Health and Human Services on the federal end um, stated that uh, they ha the state agency uh, overclaimed $124,046 from 2006-2008. Overclaimed, meaning? Meaning that they uh, placed children under Title IV-E foster care that were not qualified under, uh -huh. the, under the legislation. Okay. okay, I get you. So basically that means is that they would put children under Title IV-E to rake in more money for budgetary coffers. Kids that didn't belong in that designation. That did not belong in that designation. And generally when we're talking Title IV-E, we're talking children with disabilities as one example, mm -hmm. and the other example is very vulnerable, although I haven't reviewed the what defines as very vulnerable children yet. Okay. Um, the other issue at hand is that um, they actually have what is called an adoption penetration rate, and by federal law, families are mandated to be reunited together because the original function of CPS is to help families solve problems with living conditions in the home, mm -hmm. meaning if they can't um, jump through the hoops or follow the steps, then the child is then removed because there are too many conditions that were not met or the requirements were not satisfied by the CPS. Okay. Wow. All right. So basically what we got here is a situation that sets up a, a profit motive to miscategorize kids and a profit motive to to find the smallest amount, you know, any little thing we can to try to get that kid in the system. Pretty much. And the normal practice for a CPS agent is to look at is to look at living conditions, cleanliness of the house, and to see if there's supplies needed for the health and the welfare of the child. Sure. And that and you know we should be clear about this that, you know, this is not to say that, you know, CPS is all in all bad. I want CPS taking kids away from where they're getting molested or beaten or starved or anything like that. Sure. But this is a situation where it seems to me uh, being used as a political tool where they know they can't get what they want uh, through the legislature. Well, I guess they can through the legislature. But, you know, from the, from the Idaho people, you know, are clearly in favor of medical marijuana. And now, you know, they can't make Lindsay shut up. The, the, the people keep coming out to march, so what do they have left but then to go after the kids? Have you uncovered any other cases where there was a seeming political motive like this? I, I have not uncovered a political issue, but the only political-oriented thing in my research I found was actually spearheaded by Georgia State Senator Nancy Schaefer, who was investigating Georgia's CPS for wrongfully telling... Uh, 
uh, parents that you can get your kids back if you sign this certain kind of paperwork, but in reality, that paperwork terminated the rights of the parents, and then they were sent off to adoptions in other parts of the country or the state of Georgia. Um, Georgia State Senator Schaefer later mysteriously died. I don't know the period of time. I don't have it in front of me. Mm -hmm. But essentially, many parental rights a activists had said that she was murdered, but that was just a, that's just a speculation on their part. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, uh, again, we're speaking with Mark Reinhardt from Idaho Calling. And is that just uh, YouTube.com slash Idaho Calling? No, it's actually YouTube.com slash Acoustic Freeze 1. If okay. you search Idaho Calling in the YouTube search page, you can find my channel. All right, excellent. I encourage everyone to do that because uh, there's so many, you know, angles to this story. When we start digging into it, you know, the marijuana angle is just one side of it, and the government angle is the other side. Uh, this has just been a really harrowing case for us to have to deal with. Everybody's nerves are on edge. Uh, I want to bring uh, Sarah Frank into this for just a second uh, because I know Sarah is, if there's anybody who, who's, more angry than me, it's probably Sarah. <laughs> so, oh, I'm <laughs> Sarah's definitely pissed. So, how, how, I don't know where to start, but uh, give us your feelings on this this case and how do we move forward with the Idaho people? <laughs> um, well, I'm pissed. That's yeah. my feelings. It summarizes a hot rage, is where I'm at. I'm pissed off my friends are going through this. I'm pissed off those children are going through this. Yeah. And the psychological damages that are causing to my friends and my children, or the children of my friends. You know, I know these boys. Mm -hmm. I know all of them. They're great kids. They play with my kids, and they don't deserve this. And like Sarah Caldwell mentioned recently, her son came home, you know, and started packing a bag. Her autistic son came home and packed a bag just in case the police forced him to go someplace else. Yeah. And to have to prepare for that at five years old, six years old, is not okay. And when the charge is a dangerous substance called marijuana, and marijuana, according to science and toxicology, is not dangerous, <laughs> that's just laughable. Yeah. We're laughing at them, you know? And we, we are here, Moms for Marijuana is here, Idaho Moms for Marijuana, and Idaho Normal, and Compassionate Idaho, we are here to educate. We are here to help raise awareness of these situations, because Lindsay's not the first in the state to lose her children because of marijuana. And I better be the last. But we want her to be the last. We don't yeah. want this to keep happening over and over and over again. There are people in the state who have lost their children to adoption for having a broken bond. That's not even having marijuana, and it wasn't mm -hmm. even theirs. Mm -hmm. it, these laws are ridiculous. Yeah. And meanwhile, we have uh, parents leaving loaded firearms within <laughs> the easy reach of their children, and it's just considered an accident when one of them shoots somebody. It's yes. not child endangerment at all to have bullets in a gun in your home, but if you have pot in your bedroom, oh my God. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's insane. So, folks, if you can donate, if you can help out with this, uh, please do. Our, uh, our account is set up. I've got a, a Rad Rush short link to it. So if you go to rad-r.us slash Idaho Fund and just capitalize the I and the F, Idaho Fund, we're over $6,000. Let's, let's get that over ten. Let's just keep giving and keep giving because this is one of those test cases. This is one of those moments where precedent is set. And activists from Arkansas and Texas and Florida and everywhere else where they're you know facing just as much discrimination are going to see... This woman stood up in Idaho, and everybody backed her, and that's going to cause the next uh, DA or the next cop to think twice about whether or not they want to get into this thicket. <laughs> so be loud. Be loud and be proud and help as best you can. Let's give the mic to Lindsay for just a second before we close out. And, uh, Lindsay, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier how scared you are and, and you know, you're, you're missing your kids here, but... Everyone here, I'm sure, is just so proud of you about how you're standing up against this and refusing to allow them to call marijuana use child endangerment. Let's talk about that a little bit. So basically, um, I'm going to have to go through hoops to get my mm -hmm. children back. Mm -hmm. And some of those hoops are going to be, like, they're going to try to probably put me in substance abuse. So today we had a talk about, well, I'm not abusing a substance, I'm a patient, um, due to the amount that was found in my home. and guaranteed because they're trying to figure out a way for me to submit and I'm more than willing to to submit um, my THC level to them 
But my multiple sclerosis, so apparently my body is deciding to hate me and won't let me pee on command. <laughs> so, um... You must pee now! Well, they give you three minutes, <laughs> and sometimes it just doesn't work like that with MS. So my central nervous system says, no, that's the way it is. So, and I tried five times. I tried five times before I went to court that day. And I could not do it. Jeez. And then um, they said, well, we can take our hair follicle sample, and that... I was willing to do until they told me it was a cotton ball size of hair, and my hair is falling out right now, and I don't know why. Oh. And then um, today I finally talked to her about a mouth swab, and I'm like, please do it, because they need to see. It's probably going to be one of the highest THC levels Idaho has ever seen. <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. counting on it. <laughs> and Set the record, girl. I'm trying. <laughs> well, I was. But, I mean, I'm not, but it was... It's going to prove a point. They're going to have to see that um, it's not toxic. And that was the point, when I, one of my main points when I met with them today was, how can you say that I was endangering my children when that's a non-toxic substance? Right. And I, I pointed out, um, it, it, was, it was secured um, in, in a, a secure place with a, with a child lock on it. And... Um, I, I asked her, what would you do if I had a, a fridge full of beer? You know, if the kids got into that and decided to get drunk, mm -hmm. you know, then is it going to be an issue? No charges. You know, no charges. And the thing of it is, is I don't think that they understand. I think that there's this huge, huge problem with education, which we've already acknowledged a thousand times. but. It, when I'm talking to her and I'm explaining, she's like, okay, so they want to get a detailed kind of background on you. And they ask you about your your previous drug use. And I'm not going to lie about it. I refuse to lie to them about it. I'm not going to. I mean, if it's, if I, the only drug that I've ever really had any real involvement with has been cannabis. So there's no reason for me to lie about it. And um, she, they were asking about the background with that. And... It just kept coming back as, um, you know, it's, it's a substance that could hurt them. And I kept correcting her that, no, it cannot hurt them. And I'm a patient, and it's medicine, and they've been taught, you know, yeah. that we can't do this. And it's it's been frustrating, you know, because if it would have been any other substance, then It'd this be wouldn't fun. be in danger in it. Yeah. But because it's cannabis, and we're in Idaho, I've got this issue. So it's education, because... What they're going to see is my THC levels dropping. Meanwhile, they're going to see my health problems increase. Yeah. And although that is a really hard and really shitty position to be in, yeah. um, it'll prove its point. It sure will. Hey, we've got to wrap this hour up. Coming up in the next hour, we've got the recording from our press conference. It's audio only. We have some video issues, but we've got the audio from the press conference. So stay tuned. Check that out. Lindsay Reinhardt, thank you so much for being strong. We're behind you all the way. Everybody here from Idaho, you guys are true warriors. I'm Radical Russ here for 420 Radio. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for the press conference, and we'll try to bring back more for tomorrow's show. I know the Internet's been a little spotty. Uh, working the best we can, and we'll bring you back more content. For everybody here in Idaho, I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is Mark Reinhardt for the Idaho, uh, Idaho Calling YouTube channel, signing out.